coming to put a wainscot, stone wainscot on this house. I got about a two foot area there that's pulled some of the hardy backer that was there to keep the rodents and stuff out. I'm gonna put some of this stone here. On. It's got some. Got some pieces of lichen all over it. Yeah, we're gonna pour a little footing across that and sheet it and lath it and snow it. Give it a little facelift. We're gonna pull the, that set of stairs off and move them over to the front of this door move that railing off to the side where the stairs are so the stairs will come up right here got a slab of stone we're gonna put down right here to chisel out that stump here's the stone over here put that piece at the bottom of the stairs it's about a four and a half by four foot piece about five inches thick We got these little footings dug. We're gonna pour those with concrete. Put down a piece of green plate and sheet that so that we can do our stone across the front of there.
cool. screws in place here and all this wet set our green plate so we just ran some three inch screws into the board and then just wiggled it down in so those are just holding on there right into the wet concrete. That way you don't have to pre-drill them and put a blue screw or whatever into it. Just once that dries, that'll hold solid. That'll take the fight out of it. I got the stairs up, got the handrail screwed on, turning out pretty good all right.
There's a big hole back in there. We're burying up.
the day. I'm freezing. The stone's too heavy to float over that, so we're gonna have to do a some kind of a header to hold it up. Got about six inches of ice hanging off of there. It's all it's ready to all just slide all at once. Come down on somebody's head. When we sheeted this crawl space area then we had we did it with three quarter inch plywood so we had to so right here then it uh, made it it furted out three quarters and then the stone went so with our stone we have to trim the back of the stones off so we're cutting about Cutting it on an angle so it's about three quarters of an inch off the back of it to get it to sit right. To get it to sit right on there. So the stone's kind of trimmed on the back there and it kind of brings it up closer to the logs here. These are the seals we was thinking about putting on there, but they're so crisp and perfect because they're cultured. 
so they kind of look look really cultured on there so you get you get a piece like that on there and they look really straight and perfect and uniform when the stone isn't this natural stone and a cultured seal so to get them to look so that it, so that the seal looks like a more realistic looking seal then we got these other ones and they seem they're a little bit darker but they they seem to fit the fit with this style of stone a little better this one's so crisp and nice and perfect and this one's got irregularities in it and color variation like the stone itself has we left these stones kind of sticking up different heights, not really worrying about where they ended up. Because we hadn't decided on the different sills. You can see the different height of each sill. So that one's a lot beefier looking than this one. So we left them a little bit high just to make sure that we didn't whoops and make the stone too low when we cut it off. So that's, that's kind of why we stick the stone up and then cut it off afterwards. You just have to be a little bit careful not cut the lath. We ended up putting mortar in there, but uh, we're going to make sure that when we seal it and the sealer comes down, comes down and kind of catches over the top of this so that moisture doesn't ever penetrate down in there. So when we mask it out, we'll make sure some of the sealer comes down. Let me go to do that, so the finish on the logs.
Gets off. Gotta turn that pretty nice. Totally changed the look to this house. Cleaning up all the junk 